Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer deck tech. And today we're gonna to be talking about Gruel Anti-Control. Definitely one of the more unique lists I've ever done on the channel here before. As always, before we hop into the video, let me know in the comment section below at the end of the video, is there anything that I definitely should have included in the deck that was not featured today? And if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, just let me know in the comment section. So, okay. Gruel Anti-Control. So the idea of this deck is, let's say, you know, like, where, wherever you play Magic, let's say it's at, you know, if it's at home or at your local game store, you know, and there's a ton of control decks that, you know, you're tired of all your spells getting countered and you're, you're over it. You're done. You just want to play creatures that your opponents essentially can't really deal with. That's kind of the idea here. So most of the creatures that we are featuring in the deck tech um, either have, like, can't be countered or they have hexproof, or they have like really good ward, or combinations of both uh, in some cases. So let's go and hop into here. Okay, so this first slide here, obviously, um, two of the creatures here don't have, you know, hexproof or can't be countered or anything, Lana Rolves and Elvish Mystic, but, you know, obviously we're playing like a monster's deck, so, you know, obviously we want to be able to cast our large creatures, and Lana Rolves and Elvish Mystic help us do that. We're also playing three Sylvan Karyatid, which does have Hexproof, which is pretty sweet. So our opponent, you know, they're not able to Fatal Push Sylvan Karyatid or anything like that, which is pretty sweet. So definitely the Mana Accelerators are very, very important in this deck, which will make soon, well, which will make sense very soon, just because a lot of our creatures we have are expensive, and we do want to at least try to cast those on curve. So next slide here is the core of the deck i would say on um, the next two slides are a lot of our three four and five drops so we're playing four copies of witch stalker three three for three with hex proof whenever an opponent casts a blue or black spell during your turn put a plus one plus one counter on witch stalker which obviously you know whenever our opponent tries to counter one of our spells you know they play like a memory deluge um they you know even just like a doom blade or a doom blade effect on our turn anything like that witch stalker gets a plus one plus one counter and it has hex proof so it's really really hard to kill so definitely a big fan of witch stalker we're also playing two copies of Clothis God of Destiny and Domer Anarch of Bolas. So, yes, Clothis can be countered, but this card is absolutely incredible if it resolves. Um, just because, you know, if our opponents, you know, they're they're wiping our board, countering maybe some of our spells, at least the ones that can be countered, you know, they're cycling a bunch of cards into their graveyard. You know, they, they board wipe us. Oh, so now if our creatures are in the graveyard, basically we just get so much value from Clothis. We're able to just continuously just keep pinging our opponent. If there's lands in the graveyard, we can make a little bit of mana if we need to. But the main thing is, is they're always taking two damage and then we're gaining two life. Clothis is absolutely incredible. A lot of the times in the control matchups, I intentionally don't make this a creature um, just because, you know, if they Sunfall, for instance, and Clothis is a creature, then that means we lose the Clothis. So it's actually very strategic to keep it under 7 Devotion, so that way it's not a creature. Obviously, there's some scenarios where you definitely want to make it a creature, you know, if you're going for Lethal or something like that. But at least in Control matchups, it's kind of interesting to not make it a creature. It's a very, very cool design. Huge fan of Clothis. Domri is pretty self-explanatory. It's an Anthem for our creatures. It makes mana, and our creature spells can't be countered this turn, which you'll kind of see most of the creatures at our top end actually pretty much all of them can't even be countered anyways but it's also really good just because we have the fight ability on domri as well obviously in like a perfect world we play like a turn two domri which is just huge and then turn three we can slam like a five or even a six drop if we followed it up with another elf that kind of thing so definitely a big fan of domri anarch of bolus so next slide here we have some of our I guess, you know, I guess our lower end monsters that we're playing. So Bonecrusher Giant's pretty self-explanatory. It can be countered, but the card is just really, really good for the most part. That's why we're playing Bonecrusher Giant. Obviously, we got the Stomp side. We got the regular side. Both are fantastic. And what's also kind of nice to it is it is punishing against control decks. Whenever it's targeted by a spell, Bonecrusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller, you know? So if they Fatal Push it or um, they get lost it, whatever, they're at least going to take two damage, which is pretty sweet. But we're playing four copies of Shifting Ceratops in the main board and three Thrun Breaker of Silence. Both of them can't be countered. Shifting Ceratops has protection from blue, and then for a green, we can give it Reach, Trample, or Haste until end of turn, which is pretty sweet. And then Thrun Breaker of Silence can't be the target of non-green spells your opponents control or abilities from non-green sources, which is pretty sweet. So unless our opponent's playing like assassin's trophy they can't even like target this thing which is pretty sweet 
But as long as it's our turn, Thrun has indestructible. So if our opponents, you know, they're playing like some Death Touchers or they're whatever, they got like three creatures to try to like, you know, kill the Thrun, they can't. It is Tranquil, so they can't even chump block it. So Thrun is really, really good against control decks. Definitely a big fan of it. I also really love shifting Ceratops in this deck just because, you know, if we put a bunch of pressure on our opponent and then they have to follow it up with like a Supreme Verdict or something, then we can play the shifting Ceratops, give it haste, get in there. They can't even counter it. So unless they have like exactly like a get lost or something like that or a wandering emperor shifting ceratops is just going to come in and just clean up and then okay let's say oh they have to board wipe again because they died to the shifting ceratops then boom we play another one or we follow it up with another hasty threat definitely a lot of good options huge fan of shifting ceratops in general in our last slide here so these are all of our big big well, spells i'd say creatures but obviously we're playing two copies of chandra awakened inferno huge fan of this card i love chandra i don't play it a lot in pioneer anymore but this is the perfect deck for it six loyalty for four red red this spell can't be countered which is sweet plus two each opponent gets an emblem with at the beginning of your upkeep this emblem deals one damage to you and yes they do stack so you play chandra boom tick up next turn boom tick up again they're taking two with their upkeep they're taking then they're taking three at their upkeep so on and so forth minus three deals three damage to each non-elemental creature we're not playing any elementals really in our deck at all but it's just good you know for if we happen to be playing against like an aggro deck you know we're able to minus three and deal three damage to each other creature which is pretty sweet um being able to just clear the board and then we have all of our big fat creatures and they'll be able to get in for some damage and then the minus x deals x damage to target creature or planeswalker if a permanent spell or a permanent dealt damage this way would die this turn exile it instead obviously being able to just have the direct damage is pretty sweet you know if we need to kill like a wandering emperor or teferi for instance you know boom minus get it out of here chandra is definitely very very sweet and it's at six loyalty too so i mean we can hit something for four for five whatever doesn't even matter chandra huge fan of the card for our opponents playing a bunch of board wipes for instance or even like farewell it dodges farewell chandra is absolutely fantastic huge fan of the card in general and then we are also playing four copies of carnage tyrant obviously a personal favorite of mine obviously you know for those who have seen uh the picture i use on youtube here you know that i'm a huge fan of carnage tyrant and when we were building this deck i'm like man we have to play four copies of carnage tyrant the card is absolutely incredible seven six can't be countered trample and hexproof every control decks nightmare and that's why we're also playing its big brother, Tyranax Rex. It's one more mana, but it's an 8-8. Still can't be countered. Trample, Ward 4, which is pretty close to Hexproof, and has Haste and Toxic 4. The Toxic 4 is not going to come up very often, but being able to Haste and Trample is sweet. Ward 4, extremely hard to kill. Sure, pay 6 mana for your Get Lost. Whatever, it doesn't even matter. Tyranax Rex is absolutely incredible. Big fan of the Carnage Tyrant and the Tyranax Rex in the deck overall. So that's the entire main board, except we got to go over the lands real quick here. So one thing I did not mention with this deck, um, which we'll kind of get into in a second, is this isn't a budget deck, but it's not like a fully 100% tuned deck, which I will explain that in a minute after the mana base here. So the mana base for this deck is really, really simple. We're playing four Copper Lane Gorge, four Carplosion Force, and four Crag Crown Pathway as our main dual lands in the deck. Then we're also playing two Lair of the Hydra, seven Forests, and three Mountains. We don't have a crazy amount of red in this deck. We're really just playing Domri, Clothis, um, Chandra, Awakened Inferno, and Bone Crusher Giant. So we don't need a crazy amount of red. We do need double red, but, you know, we have enough dual lands and everything like that. So, and as the spicy basic land of the day, I decided to play the brand new uh, Murders at Karlov Manor alternate art lands just because, you know, it's Gruul. Focus on Ravnica. It's not really like a gruel. It's not really doing gruel things for the most part in these lands. But I think these lands are really, really cool. I'm definitely a big fan of them. You know, whenever I open them in my booster packs, I always keep them, you know, so I can just have a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, different kind of full art lands if I, you know, depending on what deck I want to play. Like, for instance, if I'm playing a gruel deck. So, all right. Let's go ahead and hop into uh, the sideboarding. And then we also have to talk about some budget options as well as some upgrade options because we're kind of in between. We're not a budget deck, but this isn't a fully tuned list. So sideboarding is really, really simple. We're going to want some artifact and enchantment hate. Personally, I would recommend pick your poison. The card is fantastic in the metagame right now just because obviously make him sacrifice an artifact or an enchantment or a creature flying, which is really, really good against Vein Ripper right now. We're also going to want some extra removal. You could play a ton of different ones. Personally, I would recommend either Rending Volley, 
Lithomantic Barrage for like the different blue and white, you know, decks. There's a whole bunch of them in the metagame right now. You could also play a card like Brotherhood's End or Anger of the Gods or Sweltering Suns if there's a lot of smaller creatures in your metagame. And then Graveyard Hate is pretty self-explanatory. I would personally play like Tormod's Crypt and Graft Digger's Cage. You could also play some Scavenging Ooze if you'd like to as well. Really, any of those options are good. If you want to know exactly what I'm playing in the sideboard, though, you can check out the deck list in the description below. It'll have exactly what I'm playing. So the other thing I want to talk about. So I have budget and upgrade options for this deck because, again, you know, I did put in like stomping grounds and besages and things like that. It's kind of more of a, I don't want to say simplified deck, but you know, it's kind of right in the middle. It's not either one. You could go pretty much either way with it, which obviously the budget options. So personally, if you're looking to trim the deck a little bit, I would personally go a little bit cheaper on the dual lands, you know, maybe play like some rootbound crags. You could also play Rockfall Veil. Vale. That's a really, really good dual land, and it's only around a dollar for the most part. Um, you would also have to cut the ty uh, Carnage Tyrants and the Tyrant X Rexes. Um, you know, they are eight bucks a piece. We're playing six copies of them. That can kind of add up. Personally, I would recommend substituting any card pretty much that's a little bit expensive for you. Just replace it with a different hexproof creature. So, for instance, you know, Sylvan Curator. I want to say they go for about four or five do uh, US dollars a piece. Replace them with Paradise Druid. That's a pretty good substitute there. You know, um, obviously, like Carnage Tyrant and T Rex, I believe it's called Crag Plate Bayloth. It's from Zendikar Rising. It's like a 6 6 hex proof, can't be countered, haste. You know, it's like a big, a big beast. Substitute it for that. Really, just any big hex proof creature, just make the substitute, and that's pretty much about it, you know. Um, that's personally what I would recommend doing, at least if you're looking to trim the budget on that. You know, but I I, I can't say enough. Carnage Tyrant and T-Rex, you know, they're fantastic cards. Um, if you do obviously have the budget for them, I highly recommend playing them. Not only they're really fun to play, but I would say they're arguably the best creatures in the entire deck. So those are the budget options. But if you're looking to upgrade the deck, it's pretty simple overall. You're going to want the Channel Lands and Stomping Grounds, which is pretty simple. You know, the Sakens and the Beseju, you want some Stomping Grounds. That's really it in terms of, you know, most of the upgrades you could do for the deck just because, you know, again, we already have the Carnage Tyrants, we already have the Tyrant X Rexes. So the deck is largely pretty much ready to go, except for just some of the pricier uh, cards and as well as some sideboard cards. You know, you Rampaging for Ostons, those go for, you know, about six, seven US dollars a piece. Get a couple of those for the Amalia combo. And then for the most part, it kind of just goes from there. But the main thing I want to mention is the list as it is right now only goes for about $140, which I know that sounds like a lot, but in terms of a fun pioneer deck to play that's you know pretty solid at the FNM level is honestly pretty cheap. And that's the last thing I want to mention before we wrap up the video here is, you know, the idea of the deck was we wanted to build a Gruel deck that's really, really good against the different control decks. But that doesn't mean it's not bad against midrange, for instance. Midrange, all the removal is extremely bad against us. You know, like all their, you know, their power word kills and all their murderous riders and, you know, everything like that. It's all terrible against us because most of our creatures have hexproof, which is pretty sweet. So that's the thing I wanted to mention. It's not like you could only play this against control. You'll also do pretty good against other aggro decks just because this deck goes a lot bigger than them. So definitely a very, very fun list to build, especially if you love gruel decks like me and you're just so tired of all the control decks in your metagame, you just want to stick it to them, this is the perfect deck to play. So, that takes us to the end of the video. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the list, and also let me know if you decide to end up building this deck or something close to it, or let me also know if you already have a deck like this you know how does it play in your local metagame how do the control players feel when we're just playing all these can't be countered cards and they can't do anything about it just let me know in the comment section so i'm commander crane thanks for watching this video and i'll catch you in the next one